uh, but that is now something that Orange County and Highland Falls can lay claim to. Uh, I want to thank the people who've been on the ground working so hard. Let me give a special shout out to Kevin Coffey, the regional CEO of the East New York Red Cross. Kevin, uh, let's give him a round of applause for the... <laughs> The 60 volunteers that you brought together in this small community assessing damage in over 1,000 homes and just providing immediate relief as the Red Cross always does. Uh, thank you for living up to the legacy of the Red Cross of being there for our people. So thank you again to everyone as well. I also want to give a shout out to Jackie Bray, my commissioner uh, of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, who's done an amazing job traveling the state just being so hands-on. She lives in this region not far from our. She suffers from the same ice storms and power outages and everything. So she tells me what's going on in her own house, and that's pretty much a snapshot of what's happening in your communities as well. So uh, let's give a round of applause to Commissioner Gray as well. And uh, we are very fortunate to have the Commissioner of Housing and Community Re Renewal, Ruth Ann Visnaskas, the emphasis today is going to be on community renewal. And we're talking about a program that uh, she brought to our attention as one that can give relief to our homeowners here, we'll be talking about in a couple of minutes. But uh, also, uh, Faith Moore, the Executive Director of the Rural Development Advisory Corporation, is going to play an important role. Thank you, Faith. Thank you for uh, you know, taking on the mantle responsibility. But let's talk about our local elected officials. They have been battle-tested. And I want to thank, first of all, our state partners. Chris Ekus is here today, our assembly member, who came through here with Speaker Carl Heasty, literally just a couple of days after the storm. Then the speaker contacted me and said, we need to be able to give some relief to these homeowners. And so uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Senator Skoufis was involved with us uh, hands-on last week as this was unfolding. And he's not able to be joining us here today, but he's uh, very much involved in getting the state resources to this effort as well. Also, our county executive, uh, Steve Newhouse, thank you. Thank you for being the person who stepped up, was there, the, the voice of calm during a crisis. It was a pleasure to work with you. I know our team really was appreciative of the engagement of all of the local communities who pulled together during this time. So uh, let's give our county executive a round of applause as well. So as I just mentioned at the outset, this was just a one week in from when Mother Nature opened up her fury and the heavens opened up. And I was able to see what happened on the main streets and walking into Andy's diner and hearing the stories of people who were having breakfast there because their power was out in their house and we got the power back on, but it's almost what I would call the storm hangover. The streets may start looking good, but you go down the basement and you get a really bad headache when you start seeing the cleanup that's required. And so it may look sometimes like we've returned to a state of normal, but it's not really the case if you're one of the thousand families who had damage to your, your home and your, your most prized possessions. I mean, that's your life story that may have washed away in a box of photos that happened to me when I my kids are little, keep saying, Mom, you have no pictures of us when we were little. Didn't you take any pictures? I took thousands of pictures, and a flood washed them away along with some of my pictures from my wedding. So I, I know the pain that's involved when that part of your story is gone forever. That was before we had the cloud. Luckily, the cloud is hopefully keeping everybody's photos today. So I know what it's like, but also the loss of life. Uh, Pamela Nugent, one of our residents here, you know, her story was just coming to light as I was here, and, and how devastating for her family. She's out there trying to help with her dog, and uh, unbelievable sadness associated with the loss of life. And we talk about where we are today, and I'm not gonna go into the whole climate change story. You only need to turn on television. You know, the temperatures are rising. You know, records throughout this planet, you know, in our own country, people suffer when there's going to be loss of life because of the extreme heats. Uh, sea levels are rising, rain is falling, and the storms are really getting much, much stronger. So when I see what's happening out there, we're doing what we can with our own state policies, but we need everybody from the federal government to other countries to people in their own homes and their communities to 
feel that they're part of a, a climate action brigade. So we're doing this not that we can stop next week's storm, it's too late, but we are the last generation that can do something to spare our children and their children from what we're starting to see unfold here. And that is the responsibility I feel we all owe to each other. Also, you know, thank you to the first responders, the paramedics, the EMTs, the firefighters, the police officers, my state police was really involved, and others who are now in the repair mode of fixing the roads, the bridges. We had to reopen so much. Uh, as you know, we've, we've assessed that we had over $50 million in damages, and as I presented last weekend, our letter that went out for a, a major presidential disaster declaration. I feel very confident. We've been in constant communication with the White House, explaining to them the extent of the damage, $50, $50 million uh, statewide across many, many of our counties. And it was, a, it was stunning to see the number of the scale of this storm and how many counties were affected. But that is for municipalities. That is to fix the roads and the bridges, the infrastructures, uh, the schools, the, the town halls, the village halls. And what about the homeowners? Who's taking care of them? And I doubt that most people have enough money in their bank account to cover unanticipated damage. You know, your appliances are now forever ruined. You have to put on new boards on your porch. You have to new, new drywall and carpeting in the basement. I mean, I've, I went through this, I know. In fact, my own home is still damaged from the blizzard in Buffalo Christmas time. My condo building is still down to studs and concrete floors, and uh, they're still working on insurance issues. So uh, I know what it's like to even live in the your constant reminder that your home is not back to being your home again. And the problem is for most of us, myself included, especially when you're living on the fourth floor of a condo building, you don't think you need flood insurance. Nor do people living in our streets in communities like Highland Falls. I mean, why would you need flood insurance? And you know, it seems like you're not just gonna be left high and dry, which sounds better, you're gonna be left low and wet. That's, that's really the status we're finding ourselves in now. So we've been working tirelessly since I first walked these streets and, and our assemblymen walked these streets with the speaker, trying to say, is there any money, because this is normally responsibility of the federal government, but is there any money that's available at all to help these homeowners uh, in here in Orange County? Especially those who are lower income, moderate income, middle class families who don't have this money sitting there. So I'm really proud today we've identified a funding source. We'll be announcing and putting forth $3 million available for these homeowners here in Orange County. And this is a lifeline. This will be a lifeline and providing critical emergency repair grants to homeowners who meet the income threshold. And if there's money remaining, we'll be raising those thresholds. So the New York Homes and Community Renewal, Ruth Ann Viskanaskis and her team will be overseeing the program. Again, thank you again, Commissioner. Uh, administered by Rural Development Advisory Corporation, a very well-respected local nonprofit. Grants of up to $50,000 will be awarded, again, to cover emergency repairs that threaten safe living. And I'm talking about electrical and your plumbing and your heating and appliances and flooring and more. So we stand united in our commitment to not just be there the day after when all the attention is on a community and to walk away and leave you with that hangover. Uh, we're here to help. And we are reuniting our commitment to rebuild communities, rebuild homes, and rebuild people's dreams and their faith again. So that's the collaboration of our dedicated partners. We're gonna bring the communities and the people who suffered so much, bring them back. And the road's gonna be tough. Like I said, still dealing with repairs from Christmas. Um, we're told a few more months. But it's at these moments, and especially in a community that's as tightly knit as Highland Falls and some of our surrounding areas, this is our chance to rise up and show the caliber of the people, the, the depth of our character, the strength of, this is when you measure the strength of a community, not by the magnitude of the challenges that we're facing, but by the, the courage and the resiliency we demonstrate in the recovery. So let's embark on our journey of rebuilding, revitalizing, and restoring. And I'm excited to be part of this because I know a lot of times people lose faith in government and they think that you know, there's not a lot they can do to help you in your everyday lives. We're here to help, my friends. We are here. 
You're not giving up on this community. We're going to help lift you up. And to all the local officials, many of whom I met the other day, I thank you because you're the face of hope for so many people. And that's exactly the role we want to play here with this $3 million uh, assistance program here today. Again, I want to introduce someone who's been fighting for this community. He's, a, he's your voice in Albany, in our state capitol, and he is working so hard to make sure the homeowners get the relief and all the support they need. Let me introduce the site member, Chris Ekus. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very glad to be here, but not under these circumstances. Um, the governor is more than a governor. I'd like to think of her as I watched her up here. She's a guiding light. She is truly taking us in the direction we need to go. She's bringing the resources in. As she mentioned, one of the toughest things that we have with government is getting money now, and that's what she has done. She has made $3 million available to us now for the homeowners. And it, it is such a relief. Uh, it is the phone calls I've been getting left and right uh, relative to repairs. We are almost at that peak where we're done with cleanup, and we are going to go into that uh, slope of needing repairs. Um, and I can't say enough thank you to the governor for doing this. I mean, this was a surprise. Uh, on my part, and I think it is for all the residents here, and uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Just like we thank the veterans, we thank the EMTs, we thank the volunteer fire departments and so on like that, it's more than a thank you. It, it's, it's God bless you all for doing this, and thank you very much. Uh, I've been here in uh, this disaster area each of the last seven days. I want to thank uh, the uh, supervisor, Bob Livesey. I want to thank the mayor here, Joe D'Onoprio. Uh, they, they are just fantastic people. And I can tell you, I've been here in town on the streets. They have been here in town on the streets. Uh, you can't have asked for a better community and better elected officials uh, than we have in those towns which were affected. Uh, and of course, this extends out even farther than just uh, Highland Falls and Fort Montgomery. It goes to Cornwall, Cornwall on Hudson. Uh, we have the mayor of Cornwall on Hudson here. Thank you very much. Uh, and it even goes down to Stony Point, which happens to be one of my municipalities in my district too. So this is fairly widespread, and we are just hoping, very confident, as mentioned by the governor, that FEMA will come in and make their declaration. And from that, we can continue to benefit the people that need it. That's what's so important. Uh, one of the last things that I'll mention, having been a teacher so long, you don't hear somebody after a couple of minutes anyway talking, but one of the things I want to mention is I think these communities have amazed themselves. Uh, when we have come back in in the last couple of days and seen the amount of cleanup and neighbor helping neighbor, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just so proud to be a representative of all these folks in my district. And I thank all of them for doing what they've done. Uh, for those who are out there, it's not over. We still need water. We had 85 wells tested right here in this town. Most of them came back with E. coli. We still need uh, potable water brought in here and so on like that. Um, we need food. These poor people, many of them don't have electricity. They don't have gas. We still need to supply them with food. We are bringing in organizations. The Red Cross is here. Thank God for the Red Cross, they have done a whole lot and uh, they are going to continue to be here to pick up whatever is necessary and whatever they can do, but we are bringing in other organizations too. And as mentioned, Rubco is one of the organizations that will be dealing with the governor. I had the pleasure of working with them as an Orange County legislator. Um, and it's interesting, five years ago, I think uh, the County Executive Steve Newhouse and I stood in a room kind of shaking hands almost with tears in our eyes because I was leaving the county legislature. I was retiring and uh, we had such a great working relationship. I'm glad I can come back and be here now to work with you once again. What a great man and, and what a response he and the county have had. We couldn't have asked for anything more. So with that, I'd like to introduce County Executive Steve Newhouse. Well, uh, it's still morning, so good morning, everybody. Um, you took some of my shtick, Chris. Uh, anyway, um, 
First, I'm, I'm so happy to be here with the governor. I used to call her Kathy when she was the lieutenant governor. We used to do a lot of economic development together, but um, she's doing a, a great job. And we talk pretty much every day. Kathy Bray, uh, the Homeland Security Director, and uh, Pavan, uh, wonderful staff. Um, and I got to tell you, the State Police Zone Commander, Pete Rigliano, is the best field commander that they have here. He is probably the best zone commander we've ever had. I love them all. But I mean, we're on the phone every day, multiple times in a day. We had, got hit with another storm on Sunday. We had pre-stage uh, equipment from the county and the state police and the state DOT. Uh, we had an almost near fatal car accident last week with one of our police officers. She was almost killed. We were on the scene together. I mean, this guy is phenomenal as well as, the, again, the rest of the state troopers there. Um, we're in the shelter that was, that's been run by the Red Cross. We are now going to be transitioning. Um, we ha we're probably not going to have any more overnights. Uh, but we are going to keep this open um, for food and water for people. We're also going to try to transition from that because we do have the local businesses open uh, down here. So we don't want to hurt them further. So that you're going to see a transition. We just bought an air conditioning yesterday because we do have a lot of people coming in out of here. Um, I'm going to get to uh, the most important part of this is what the governor announced. Last week when we started having our uh, emergency management meetings, I went over to Mayor D'Onofrio and I said, I am getting told that it's probably not a good chance that a lot of these homeowners are going to get help. Sometimes, and I'm not criticizing FEMA, but sometimes they don't qualify for individual assistance, the infamous IA. And I know the mayor and the supervisor are like, oh my gosh, I haven't told Jim Galliano from the Highland Falls and the legislators, uh, Lori Tattel's here. I know we also have Wayne Gold, the deputy supervisor of the town of Cornwall. And we were worried about our residents. At the end of the day, I can fix my roads. The mayor can fix his roads, bridges, the supervisors can fix all our infrastructure. It's the average homeowner that didn't have flood insurance like the governor's talking about. That's not going to get that relief. This is probably the most critical thing we can do right now. I have about a thousand houses that have, or structures, that have significant damage from water. And people are living in right now. I have 20 that are red flag, which means they should be demoed and some of those are still being occupied by the homeowners because they have nowhere to go. So this is a critical thing that we're talking about right now um, that can give them actually um, help and some type of pathway forward. Uh, we, like, like the assemblyman mentioned, we just left the emergency management meeting at my office uh, with the health commissioner. She is very concerned about the water in the wells. Every one of them, for the most part, has been contaminated. We were working with New York Response in a partnership to make sure that people have home test kits. We're also going to be sending out volunteers to show them what to do because it's a process. You've got to turn off your electricity. You have to put um, the, the stuff into the wells and you've got to test it out. It's a process and if you're not doing that on a regular basis, it's just another overwhelming thing. Um, I wanted to talk real briefly about the volunteers that have come here in this community. At, at the worst times, the best people show up. We have Samaritan's Purse right across the street from here. You see the big tractor trailer. We also have Team Rubicon. We gave the green light for them last week to come. They have been doing God's work. On my way in here just now, I saw them going house to house to help people clean up. Uh, they are doing great stuff. Mount St. Mary College, my Alamada, is housing them to stay at night. Local restaurants and other eateries are feeding them to try to help them out to do their part. So if people are out there and they're watching this or they want to help, 7.30 uh, every day in the morning or 12.30 in the afternoon, you could show up to the Samaritan's Purse trailer and they will train you on to be a, 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 an aid worker with them and you will join one of their brigades to make a difference. Uh, I am thankful again to the governor. Uh, you've done a great job here with us. Um, the last thing I would like to mention is uh, West Point. I see the garrison commander right behind you. Yesterday we were able to tour from the air uh, the damage in Highland Falls and West Point. And, and I was like, all right, I'm a military guy. I've been in helicopters before. Uh, let's see what, what's going on there. I was telling Chris Ekis and the governor how important it was for me to see from the air with our two U.S. senators and our congressmen the amount of damage that's been done to this area. It looks like a war zone. It looks like you're watching what's going on in Ukraine. That's how much damage, $100 million at West Point. So uh, the garrison commander is also a partner with us. We thank you for what you're doing over there at West Point. We're all one community here. And I want to, again, thank all the members of the public for coming out and actually being part of the solution. And last, Governor, again, this is, in, this is important money because for the last week, we've been talking about what 
is going to come. What, what happens when FEMA tells the residents you don't qualify if they don't? This is critical. Thank you.